Hi everyone, welcome to episode five of The Well. I'm Teresa Palmer and I am going to be talking to you today about a topic that someone asked us to delve into uh, in the comments on the very first episode. Someone said, can you talk about navigating toxic friendships and relationships? And so that's what today's subject is about. I hope you loved last episode with Daniel Ahern. He's such a dream boat and he really helped reinvigorate my passion for meditation and taking a look at self work. And that was the last day that I've had of feeling really stuck and unable to move through negative patterns of like self-belief and, and that self-critical voice um and maybe it was a coincidence that it was the day that I saw him but also I think it was an accumulation of me just doing the work unpacking all of the things that were coming up for me and um doing a deep dive into the trigger points where did they come from so after that episode I've had a really wonderful uh week and I wanted to jump right into this topic. Um, I have dealt with toxic friendships and relationships um, at many different seasons, in many different seasons of my life. Um, there, I certainly navigated some as a teenager uh, where I would gravitate towards people who weren't actually like-minded and didn't serve who I truly was as a, as a teenage girl. Um, but they're exciting and enticing and a little bit dangerous. And, um, and I think as I got older, I realized that the people that you keep in your orbit, those in your sacred inner circle need to be, uh, the sorts of people that love you no matter what you're going through and are there for you and can hold space for you and that there's an equal balance to the friendship. I always find that in my very favorite friendships that I have, it's a, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. When they're down, you hold them, you process things with them, their pain, you feel their pain they feel yours. And it's just this really mutually beneficial relationship between the two of you. When you start to notice that the scales tipped to one side, that's when I think really there, are, there should be little red flags popping up for you. Um, I have had people in my life where things just always felt really hard for them. And every conversation would be us going round and round in circles, breaking down the issues in their life, many of which were self-imposed because of uh, choices they were making. And we would spend our catch-ups just deep diving into all the things they were going through. And it was really hard, I remember at the time, to have the routine of our catch-ups be always focused on the ramifications of this person's choices and their actions. Um, and ultimately, it got to a point where I felt, I felt, uh, so drained after spending hours upon hours upon hours talking through every little thing that was coming up for them. And as a friend, you want to offer up solutions and guide them to, towards better choices and just also show up for them and be there for them. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, it's a part of the human experience. But you'd like to think that you can see growth in people. And sometimes there's going to be people in your life where 
It's year after year after year after year, and it's the same narrative. Just insert the different characters. And they're stuck in a pattern which they're unable to break. And you feel like you're being such a good friend to them by showing up day in, day out, putting your armor on and saying, all right, I'm in this with you. Come on, let's figure this out. And then ends up never being any kind of resolution. And the emotional um, regulation that you as a friend are having to, to do every time you're around this person, don't negate what that, how that impacts you. It starts to really uh, grind on you energetically. And I got to a point with a friend of mine where I would feel like I would need to do a clearing after I hung out with them because I would carry the weight of their choices and their life situation. Um, and they were so stuck and unwilling to see the, the patterns in their life and in the choices that they were making. So it was just this like cyclical nature that it just couldn't be broken or they weren't in a place to be able to do it. And at some point, these friends of yours or these acquaintances of yours, they'll get to a point where they will be able to start to break those patterns. But by breaking up with being the yes person, yes, I'll, I'll catch up for lunch. Yes, I will engage in yet another four hour conversation on the phone. Yes, I will FaceTime and we'll do this together and be in the trenches together. By breaking up with that yes person and putting loving boundaries in place, it is actually serving that individual. Because at some point, the more you marinate in the dramatic circumstances of their life, the more you're in, you're enabling that behavior and not saying, Hey, this is my boundary. When you're ready to move through the stuff you're moving through and make different choices, like I'm here for you. I've offered up everything I can give you. This is my friendship. This is my love. This is my support and my guidance, but it's really hard to sit here and observe you going through all the things you're going through when really it's about cultivating your own self love and self-awareness and doing the work. So I, I find friendships are very specific. They're one thing. Um, ensuring that you don't have toxic friendships in your life will only benefit you for the rest of your life. Um, the earlier you learn to figure out what friendships are serving you and what friendships aren't, the better. So I think I started looking into this kind of work in my 20s. I, it definitely started as a teenager in my final year or two of high school. And then moving through my 20s was where I really dedicated time to nurturing and loving and um, embracing those friendships that felt amazing you know those friends of yours that you have you could probably name five of them right now who just fill up your cup and you fill up theirs and you go deep and you it's you always feel lifted and inspired after seeing them you feel happy you feel connected those friendships are so meaningful and they're the sorts of friendships that can carry you your entire lifetime my nana had four best friends that she had from when she was such a young woman and raising her eight children and she would always talk about those friendships and how they looked and she always said it was so mutually beneficial and that's the way it should feel um and by breaking up with that yes person by always saying yes yes i'm gonna show up yes and in turn sort of draining your own uh energy you're actually saying yes to yourself and you should feel comfortable being able to set boundaries because it's a necessary part of life and it's going to help with your growth. It's going to help with other people around you and you can't pour from an empty cup. So what I, how I like to look at it is 
let's say you have 15 friends and there are like three that feel woof, a bit heavy whenever you spend time with them. Um, if you decide to gravitate towards the friendships that really uh, are meaningful to you and, and have such an impact on your life, a positive impact on your life, you're actually strengthening and deepening those relationships and those connections. And everyone is time poor. We are all time poor. So why use your time to try and be there for another person in a way that's actually not helping them? Um, I, in the past, have offered up other suggestions like, hey, I don't want this to impact our friendship. I would love to put up a boundary and not talk about these specific things unless you're willing to actively work on addressing some of these issues because you just end up sounding like a broken record. And I have offered up ideas of uh, certain therapists to go and see other people to take their issues to so that your friendship isn't negatively impacted. So if you're not ready to totally break it off with those toxic people in your life, that's that's great. That's fine. Um, maybe you'll get there one day. Maybe you won't. But even just setting a loving boundary and say, like, I want this to feel great between us, but I have to be honest. It feels really draining because we talk these things around in circles. And um, I'd love to just put a boundary up. I, um, with a family member of mine, um, we, about five years ago, we decided we're just not going to talk about religion. That's it. That's just something that we put in place to honor and nurture. And this is a family member, so this is not someone I would ever break up with. Um, but we figured out, okay, where are our problems? Where's the source of conflict? Where's it coming from? How do we feel after we're having these conversations with one another? And it never felt good. I wasn't going to convince her of something. She wasn't going to convince me of something. Um, so we sort of stuck in our own lanes and then decided lovingly together, we connected over the fact that, hey, let's just, this is a topic that we're not going to delve into and that's okay. And I respect your beliefs and she respects my beliefs. And um, it has really, really served us and it's strengthened our bond. I love that she has something in her life that, makes her feel so inspired and motivated and full and whole. And she loves that I have my own path with spiritual beliefs. So that's another thing is if you're not ready to, to do the full break, you can set loving boundaries and it will make you feel so much better. I think when I've really processed my friendships over the years, I remember that weight being lifted off my shoulders when I made the decision to turn elsewhere. And I've done that in relationships too, in romantic relationships too. When something's not serving me um, in the past, obviously not now, I'm in such a loving, beautiful, communicative relationship, but I have been in relationships before that were toxic, that were emotionally abusive, that were not serving me, and I was blinded by love. Um, but ultimately, I found myself getting to a place where I realized that there was just no way forward. There was no positive ways to move this thing forward, um, and that really we were on different paths. And that's the same with friendships too. Sometimes you're just not totally aligned. You don't have to be exactly like-minded. Um, but if you don't have the same sort of moral compass, it's I find it really hard to navigate those kinds of relationships. So please share with me your comments and your musings, your stories. How have you dealt with this in your life? Um, how have you felt once you've addressed these issues? We love talking about big topics over here at The Well. So um, continue to give us your suggestions and we will deep dive into all the things. All right, guys, lots of love. Enjoy those friendships and I will talk to you soon. Bye.